Hello everyone, thank you once again for checking out my channel, Imperi Auto. Uh, boy, I know I've been pretty lazy to post lately, and I wish I had some wonderful excuse like, oh, I've just been busy with real life, blah, 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 blah. But unfortunately, things have been a little rough over the last, uh, basically almost a month. Um, as most of you do not know, I live in Southwest Florida, and uh, we recently just got smacked pretty darn hard by a fella named Hurricane Ian. Huh. I really hadn't planned to do any sort of video, and you'll have to bear with me. Usually I try and kind of script this stuff, and I'm reading off a press release about a new car or truck or whatever. Uh, but I'm just kind of doing this off the cuff. I'm rolling logic right now and just talking, and uh, I'm going to put up some, some videos and photos I've taken over the past few weeks. Um, the main premise of this video is basically to show my poor forerunner that uh, sat outside for eight hours of 100 plus mile an hour winds and uh, see how she survived. I'm going to throw uh, one like and subscribe bag out there. Um, if you like my channel, you knew, hey, I'm almost up to 500 subscribers. That's really cool. And I appreciate everyone who's subscribed and, and likes my videos here and there. I'm going to really try and focus on posting more content. But uh, anyway, just trying to get back in the swing. Things are somewhat back to normal. Um, it's going to be a while before they're actually back to normal. But I digress. So basically what I'm going to show you guys today is kind of the progression and some of the videos and footage of what happened around here during the storm. And then I, I it's not going to be like some of those really awesome detail videos that are all over YouTube now that have millions of subscribers and I can sit for hours and watch them because they're somewhat um, soothing to the mind. Uh, a little bit of detailing and cleaning of my Forerunner just to show if I actually had any damage to the paint from the high winds and dirt and sand and everything else. Um, I'm very fortunate that my home roof held and uh, boy, did it get close. I'll put a video up right now of how close the seawater got to entering. This is a video one of my neighbors took, um, but very, very grateful that water did not come in my house. Um, I know a lot of friends um, that live literally 10 minutes from me that weren't so lucky. So it's been a rough go around here, everyone, but we are coming together. The support's been amazing. Um, it, it's just mind blowing the extent of the damage and how fast we are coming back strong. So let's start out with <laughs> Tuesday morning, the 27th, I guess it was of September this was basically still a Tampa storm. And again, I'm in the Southwest Florida area, Naples, Fort Myers, Cape Coral, um, Sanibel <laughs> Island, Pine Island that all got hit very, very hard. Fort Myers beach, as a lot of, you know, is, is, is in really rough shape where I'm at. Um, I am not out of a flood area. Um, so I decided to take my dogs and go up to my parents' house, which is about 30 minutes away. And while it's still close and we still absolutely felt the effects of the hurricane there, uh, thankfully they are a little higher up. So they're out of the flood area for the storm surge, which was my biggest concern. Um, as the night progressed into Wednesday, um, things started to shift a little bit. They really weren't sure where this storm was going. It went from being a North Tampa storm to a Tampa storm to a Sarasota Bradenton storm. Then it shifted down to Inglewood, Port Charlotte area, which is about f uh, 45 minutes to an hour north of me. And then um, a couple hours before landfall, um, she turned and basically we took a direct hit. I've been through a few of these storms. Uh, Charlie being the worst many, many years ago, Charlie was not fun, but this, this one, ladies and gentlemen, was on the next level because we've never experienced surge like that in this area. And it's a real eye, eye opener to how powerful these things are and how fast they can change. And you really don't know. So that being said, we were very fortunate to make it through there. Obviously power out internet gone. Um, the next morning, I, I really wanted to go check on my house. I've been trying to keep in touch with my neighbor to see any updates because they decided to stay. Um, cell phone service was basically down. You could send a basic text um, and calls would kind of go through, but they would drop. And that lasted for probably 
four or five days. And that was pretty much every provider. T-Mobile surprisingly did better than anyone. I have AT&T, but anyway, I digress. So we um, found that, that the house was okay. There, there was some damage, but but he really couldn't tell. So I wanted to get back to my house and see what was going on. It was very challenging. No power throughout the whole city. Lights dangling in the streets. Um, for every, every intersection was a four-way stop. And people obviously don't know how to do a four-way stop. Power lines in the road, debris everywhere. I mean, it really looked like a war zone. It was it was tricky just to get back to the house. But when I finally did, um, yeah, it, w- it was pretty eye-raising. Once again, I'm, I'm very grateful that we didn't have that much damage. But um, <laughs> started to work the rounds around the property. And then fast forward 12 days with no power was fun. Thankfully, we were blessed with unseasonably cool weather for this time of year in Southwest Florida. And I don't know if this is true or not, but I heard a lot of speak that this storm was so massive and so powerful that it essentially brought on the fall season in Florida early because it just blew all the fronts, everything out. So I don't know if that's true or not, but it was definitely strange, unseasonably cool temperatures for the first seven days or so, which was very nice. Because after Charlie, oh, that was in August and nothing like 90 plus degree heat with high humidity and no AC and no power. And then, and of course there's no gas anywhere. There's no gas to be found. Even if there is gas, there's no power to the stations. So they can't run the pumps. So you're basically stuck for three or four days. The, I had prepared for this a little bit. I did have some food and we had a bunch of water, batteries and whatnot. And I had, uh. Basically living off old school radio to find out what was going on because you couldn't access any sort of internet or anything on your phone. So yeah, it was it was, it was an interesting, uh, well, like I said, 12 days with no power, but probably the first five were the worst where you really had limited communication, living off the radio, um, eating cans of ravioli, Trailer Park Boys reference, I didn't eat nine cans. My poor forerunner was really messy. And let me just point out, that tank of a freaking SUV through washed out roads and debris and trees and power lines and pieces of power poles and having to go weird back routes trying to get to my house because entire power poles were down blocking the roads. I, again, I'm recording this before I even starting the video, so I'll be throwing photos up that I managed to take because really wasn't my priority at the time, but I tried to snap what I could. Um, man, the forerunner did great. And again, where I was at, thankfully we didn't get any high water. There's a lot of flood cars around here and this is not fresh water. <laughs> this is brackish, if not salt water that got into hundreds, if not thousands of cars throughout this area. I'll put some pictures up as I'm saying that there's a famous one that, that came from a little South of us of a McLaren P1. <laughs> They got washed out of a garage and totaled. You'll see that up on the screen now. But yeah, (laughs) here comes the fun of trying to figure out if the salvaged car for sale at the used car lot is a flood car or not. Um, But thankfully, I didn't get any high water and uh, got the 4Runner back to the house. The the thing, the only thing I noticed about the 4Runner is unfortunately, it did have to sit outside um, when I was at the, the location during the main part of the storm. And the next morning, I'll show you some videos here. Boy, it was just completely caked in sand and dust and tree scraps and coconut fibers and anything you can imagine. And it wasn't just dirty. If you ran your hand over it, it was like the sand was embedded into the clear coat. So I was really concerned that, man, it could be some real serious, serious paint damage. Well, as this process went on, I'm back at my house. There's no power. Um... We're on water restrictions because they did get the water running, thankfully, but it was, you know, a lot of the pump stations are running off generators. So everyone was being, trying to be very, very frugal about water usage and not overtax the system. So I wasn't dare going to try and wash it. Um, All the car washes were shut down, but finally about 10 days into this, um, I'm like, I got to get out of here. I need to get out of the house. So I went, fuel was becoming more available again. And I had half a tank of gas and I went into an area of South Fort Myers, Bonita Springs area. And um, while there was some damage there, they seemed to take 
you know, the difference in 20, 30 miles in these storms is amazing, even as big and nasty as Ian was. So a lot more things open over there. It was nice to get out of the house, uh, go sit down and have some food and air conditioning. Um, and they had a car wash open. So as you can see, here I am driving through the car wash. It was something to hopefully get at least some of that dirt and sand off the car while I could. It did an okay job, not not the greatest, but it was it was what I had for now. So fast forward a little bit, and um, there's still rough to the touch sand and dirt on the clear coat as I rub my hand over it. So finally, I uh, we've got our power back and things are like I said somewhat stabilizing. So I decided I was going to do a really good hand wash, um, and I'll cut to some footage now. I've got my trusty chemical guys bucket here. Then I got uh, citrus washing glass um, for Christmas. Um, this is not sponsored by anyone, by chemical guys. I say chemical brothers, I'm not a band. Um, I think we're gonna try the Mr. Pink Super Sud shampoo. Also have the Max Suds too. So we're gonna give this a shot and uh, see how it does with the old runner. So as you can see, I'm using the uh, Chemical Guys stuff I got for, for Christmas. And again, <laughs> please, this is not a sponsored video. Shout out to them. Hey, if they want to sponsor me, I'll gladly take it. Really good products. I'm, I'm really impressed. Just good stuff, and it's not overly expensive. I did a really good soak of the car, ran it through with this, this soap, let it soak, and I did that twice. Dried everything really well with a chamois. And um, there was a few areas I did still fill some sand and I, I clay blocked them and just, they're just very small spots, little spots. Um, and boy, I'm, I'm very thankful to say that I think it survived pretty good. The paint from what I can see in my limited high, high sunlight area right now today, it looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to keep a follow up on it and make sure there isn't any, any damage, like I said, to the, to the clear coat. But uh, she cleaned up good, and what an incredible vehicle. And I'm going to put this up now. Oh, the, the plug in the back, how awesome was that? Because, you know, <laughs> you never think about how you need to charge your phone or an iPad or plug in a little coffee maker until you're about four days in of no power, and boy, was it nice to have this. Again, the 4Runner was a rock star. I love fast cars, sports cars, you name it. And I've had a lot of cool cars over the years. I've mentioned this before. You know my obsession with Z cars. I've had 3 Series. I've had Hemi Challengers. I've had Camaro. The list goes on and on. This 4Runner is one I don't think I'll ever sell. Like, I will drive this thing to the wheels full off. Now, would I like to have another car as a toy? Absolutely. We're going to work on that. Hell, if I can ever get this channel to freaking take off. Come on, guys. Help me get 1,000 subs. Um, I'd love to get like, I, I really want one of the new Z's, maybe a 370Z Corvette. I, I don't know. But again, I'm rambling. It's just nice to have somewhat normalcy back a little bit, trying to get back into the flow of things. And I wanted to just throw this up. I mean, <laughs> it's been a rough three plus weeks, but getting back to it. And I just thought I'd share my experience from Hurricane Ian and, uh, how awesome the Toyota 4Runner is. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching the channel, checking out my video. Leave me a comment below. I'm also going to put a few things in the description link um, for some charity disaster relief donation sites uh, for the state of Florida. Um, you know, not everybody here is multimillionaires on the water. And there's a lot of people that, that just get by every month and they've lost everything. All right. Thanks again, everyone. We'll talk soon. Have a great day.